Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Mary, the librarian here. This past week, after we had that drenching rain, Ted went out to our rain gauge to see how much we had received. Now, let me tell you something about this rain gauge. When we moved in August, Ted bought it from Amazon for our new house. It was less than $5, and over 3,000 people had reviewed it, and it had more than four and a half stars. I was astonished that 3,000 people had enough time in their day to review a $3 rain gauge, but that is a story for another day. When Ted checked the amount of rain we received, he discovered that our well-reviewed rain gauge has split open and didn't even capture a drop of rain. Essentially, we asked those 3,000 people if we should buy that item, and they could not even steer us in the right direction on a rain gauge. Listen to part of 1 Samuel 22, verse 10. And he inquired of the Lord. Part of 1 Samuel 23, verse 2. Therefore David inquired of the Lord. Part of 1 Samuel 23, verse 4. Then David inquired of the Lord once again. Part of 1 Samuel 30, verse 8. So David inquired of the Lord. Now, relying on the wrong source of information for buying this rain gauge didn't ruin us. But relying on the wrong source of information for the important matters will be ruinous for us for all eternity. We need to inquire of the Lord. Until next time, this is Marion the Librarian reminding you to read the living word of God, the Bible. That's right, folks. Bye now. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing crowd? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace with power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you Samuel 27 oh, 28 3 through 19 3 through 19 okay. <clears throat> now Samuel had died and all Israel had lamented for him and buried him in Ramah in his own city and Saul had put the mediums and the spiritualists out of the land. Then the Philistines gathered together and came and encamped at Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel together and they encamped in Galboa. 
When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Samuel inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by the prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who, who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, In fact, there is a woman who is a medium in Eldor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes, and he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, Please, conduct a seance for me, and bring up for me the one I shall name to you. Then the woman said to him, Look, you know that Saul has, what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and spiritualists from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. So he said to her, What is his form? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he's covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me for bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me and does not answer me any more neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called you, that you may reveal to me what I should do. Then Samuel said, So why do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy, and the Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me? For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor David. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fierce wrath upon the Amalek, upon Amalek, therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Number one, seances are real. That's right. Um, the occult is real. There are people who cast spells on people because of the wicked powers within them. The Christians need to be afraid of that. Not afraid. You need to stay away from it. You need to not say, well, let's just go get our palms read. It's fun. It only costs $5. Maybe we'll find out something that's coming up in the future. That sounds innocent enough, doesn't it? God tells us, do not have anything to do with the occult. Period. Ever, ever, ever. What about reading our horoscope? Occult. Instead of the occult, it saying, like Saul said here, God's quit speaking to me. I've got to find out from somebody. I'll, I'll bring the dead up and let them tell me what I need to know. Of course, when Samuel came up, he told him all right, didn't he? He was more afraid then than before. One 
thing that, that God wants us to be and to have as His servants. He wants us to have courage regardless of what it is that we think we might be facing. Okay. He told Joshua that several, he's told several people in the Bible, be of good courage. The, the counterpart of that is don't be afraid. And even over in Revelations it says, but the fearful shall not see the kingdom of God. Is that unfair? No, it's not. He's telling us we're to be trusting who? What? Not mediums? Not tarot cards? Not, not daily... Uh, Readings that uh, someone has made up. We're to trust in the Lord. And when we're to trust in the Lord, God will, will show us what we're supposed to do. He'll show you that. He'll show me that. And we can take more courage in what he tells us. Uh... How did Saul get in the shape he was in? He didn't listen to what the Lord said. He said, well, I kind of did what you told me. I, I did go and kill some of the people. Look, I brought King Agag back. Isn't he a real prize? And, and these sheep and goats that you hear and, and lambs making noise. Well, we brought those all back. Uh, to offer a sacrifice for you Lord that's, that's what you want or that's what Saul thought the Lord wanted and he said am I pleased with the sacrifice of animals I'm pleased with obedience <coughs> and sometimes God speaks to us real plainly very outwardly in such a way that we can't miss what he's saying to us. If you try to suppress him and, and just don't pay attention, you'll end up in the same shape that Saul ended up in. God says he took his spirit from him. Well, that would be a bad thing for any Christian to suddenly realize I'm out here on my own. I've told this story to some of you in here before, but I'll tell it again because it's apropos. When I was in Korea in 1978, and I'd been preparing uh, messages for this church that I was going to, and I had this silly little illustration. It didn't come from the Lord. It didn't come from the Bible. It came out of my fertile imagination or my filthy imagination and I thought it would be good to use that and so I was I was preaching along and I began to give this illustration it was about a blood transfusion and what Jesus had done well let me tell you he didn't give us a blood transfusion he shed his blood to wash away our sins and I gave that little illustration and all of a sudden from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I was ice cold. And I realized I'm 10,000 miles from home and the Spirit of God has just left me. And so being quick on my feet, I said <clears throat> to my interpreter, brother, tell them that's a lie. He said, oh brother, you can't say that. It says, tell them that was a lie, what I just said. He said, brother, you'll lose face. I said, brother, I don't care who loses face. He said, we'll lose face. I said, you tell them. I'll get somebody else to translate. And he said, okay. And I assumed that he told them what I said was not true. 
that it was not in God's will. Uh, his spirit had vanished. And I wasn't going to preach anymore until he filled me with his Holy Spirit again. That's the way we're supposed to be all the time anyway. As Christians, you may not be preaching every Sunday, but you don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know what the circumstances are going to be that you meet them in. But if God's Spirit is in you and active, you can hear from Him and you can do the right thing. Or you can say, oh, what did, does it matter? They're probably going to hell anyway. Boy, what an attitude. I'll tell you, that shook me to the very foundations. And as you can tell, I didn't remember it, didn't disremember it after all these years. I still remember just as plain as day, standing on that stage before those folks and realizing that the Spirit of God had gone. And there I was, by myself. Essentially, God had said, okay, you want to disobey me? Do it on your own. You're not going to tell lies in my name. Boy, did that make an impression. It made such an impression. I do not want to speak. I do not want to preach. I do not want to sing. I do not want to come home and eat supper unless the Holy Spirit is evident in me. And I know that. And I can hear from him. Listen to what Saul said. He says, I've tried. I've tried by prophets. I've tried by the Urim. I've tried by dreams. None of those are working. God won't speak to me. That is a scary situation. The one, this is a bad, a bad um, thing to happen to you, what happened to me. But if that's what it takes, I hope it happens to you. And you say, man, I'm never going out without praying. <clears throat> and asking the Holy Spirit of God <clears throat> excuse me to fill me up before I speak <clears throat> that would be a profitable thing for you I know it was a profitable thing for me I'm not if, what, is, what is 78 from today's date Forty-four years ago. I remember it just like yesterday. I was terrified. Literally terrified. And I realized that God wasn't going to support what I did against his will. He didn't ask me to do that. I, in my little old being of a brain, I thought this will be a good illustration and so I used it and I found out it wasn't. It's was a good illustration to me not to forsake the Lord God and, and not forsake his counsel and to seek him wherever I was and wherever I was going to go because he wasn't going to put up with that. I think, I'm pretty sure, that he hasn't changed. I think that he's the same yesterday and today and forever. He doesn't turn. There's no turning of him. And if we want to be a servant of the Lord, if we want him to use us in any way, speak a word of encouragement to somebody, pray for someone, uh, sometimes to rebuke someone, We've got to have his spirit and we've got to hear from him and we've got to know when we've heard from him and then we still have to obey. And if we don't, I'm trying to help you learn vicariously what not to do. That means observe someone else and what happens to them instead of you having to learn every lesson on your own. What happened to me was terrifying. 
I never wanted that to ever, 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 ever happen again. Does that mean I've always been full to overflowing the Holy Spirit? No. I've made mistakes. I've done wrong. Uh, God's whipped me a few times. Well, hundreds of times. And I'm telling you so that you can learn. <clears throat> Make sure that you're walking around with the Holy Spirit of God. It doesn't matter where you are. When you leave here, everybody in here is going to go somewhere. Maybe to a gas station, maybe to eat out, maybe to see relatives, maybe to see friends. But you're going to go somewhere. And if the Holy Spirit of God is not alive and active in you, how are you going to know what to say? Well, I read my Sunday school lesson. Sorry, that won't do it. Number one, you need to read the Word of God for itself. Always. Uh, that is one of the things that we have emphasized over and over and over in our church. Read the Word of God consistently on some kind of regular basis, preferably daily. And what I'm preaching on this morning is from the Bible reading last week. Uh, why is that important? How else are you going to know the Word of God? How are you going to know when God speaks to you? One of the ways you know when God speaks to you is because it lines up exactly with His Word. If you have a new or strange doctrine, have you heard of this church or that church and they're doing this and that and the other? Uh, check it out in the Word. If God doesn't say it in the Word, just set that aside. Believe me, He wrote His Word that we might have a little bit of it. That we may have all of it. That we might have the manifold wisdom of God. And He wants us to listen to Him and to obey Him. What happened to Saul? He, was, <laughs> he didn't obey him. And, and it wasn't just that one time either. He had a habit of not obeying God. He had a habit of saying, Well, God, I did do what you told me to do. I, I went down there and we fought with the Amalekites. Uh, we, we did kill some of the livestock. And, and we brought the best back to you as a sacrifice. That wasn't what God told him to do, was it? That's not what God tells us to do. He wants us to obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Oh, well, what if it makes me afraid? Be of good courage. There's lots of people who have been afraid temporarily. God says, gather up your courage. Gather it up and do what God's told you to do. But what if I hurt somebody's feelings? Boy, if you follow the life of Jesus, that's what he was doing almost everywhere he went. He was hurting people's feelings. Oh, you mean my bells aren't the real God? And they would worship anything, a rock, a piece of stone, uh, uh, an idol that they'd cur carve. I, I don't know this for a fact, but I assume if somebody spit on the ground and they came along and saw it, they said, oh, here's our God. Let's, watch, let's worship him. Let's bow down. Let's give obeisance to him. He's the one that created us. I don't know what all Saul did, but apparently he stepped way over the line because God quit talking to him by any means. Um, I've, I've said this before. At the end of the day, if I get to the end of the day and I haven't flopped down and immediately went to sleep, and I think, 
I don't believe God spoke to me today. Now that includes reading his word. That includes hearing him speak to you through the Holy Spirit. That means having other Christians come by and say, oh, by the way, brother, uh, I believe this is word of the Lord. The Lord said so and so. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm going the other way. I better check in with the Lord and find out which direction I'm supposed to go. Find out if you're not afraid of me being embarrassed. Because that's a big part of our failing to, to say exactly what God says sometimes, isn't it? Oh, I'd be embarrassed. I haven't talked to that person in 30 years because I was mad at her. I'd be embarrassed to now go tell her about Jesus. Really? You'd let them go to hell? Because you'd be embarrassed? Really? Is that what we would do? Oh, it's not the right place. If we were in a better setting, I, I would do it. It may be the only setting you get. Uh, I've had some vivid experiences in my life. One was when God told me to witness to a man uh, this this is what the people of the town called him a reprobate you can go look that word up when you get home that means someone that's just almost worthless who profanes God who doesn't hold anything holy and God told me speak to that old man and you'd think being in Korea would have been enough for me to learn my lesson, but I hadn't. And I said, Lord, I'll come back next week because I'm running late. I've, I've got to be down the road here in just a few minutes and open up a new feed store down here. And that wasn't enough. The old man himself came over, the reprobate, and said, young fella, I was young then, could I speak with you a minute? I said, yes, sir, I'd love to speak with you. Tell you what, I'll come back next Tuesday. I believe Tuesday is when I was going through Dime Box at that time, or Lexington. And I said, yes, sir, next week I'll come early and, and we'll sit down and talk. And he said, okay, I'll see you then. Sure enough, next Tuesday I came. And I looked for him and didn't see him. He was always in the feed store there having a cup of coffee or something. And I said, where is this gentleman? I knew his name at the time. And they said, it's funny you should ask about him. <laughs> he died this morning at 5 o'clock. I'm giving you some vicarious teaching. You don't have to suffer that yourself. I can tell you right now that is a horrible thing to realize. That God's told you to do something and you took it lightly and said there's plenty of time. It might be your children. It might be your grandchildren. It might be an aunt or uncle. It might be your neighbor. But as sure as you've been born again, if you've been born again, God will speak to you about these things. And he's not kidding. The reason he chose you because he thought you would obey him. That's why he told me that. He thought I would obey him, but I didn't. Now, I can assure you that old man didn't go to hell because I failed to witness to him. That old man went to hell because he did not receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He not, did not believe on him. Nevertheless, boy, did I ever suffer. Because I kind of thought that. I thought, oh, he's gone to hell. God corrected me real quick. Don't, don't think yourself that important. I wouldn't turn that over to you. God does want us to obey him. That's the very thing that Saul 
did not do. He did all the other things, didn't he? He gathered up the sheep and goats and cattle. He, he took some of the best of the jewels. He was, when he got caught, he said, Oh, I was going to offer all those to you, Lord. <laughs> Look at this. I'm bringing you an offering. Isn't it good? Doesn't that please you? Tell you what pleases him is obedience. When he speaks to you. As he speaks to you. I'm telling you right now, he will speak to you. If you're born again, God will speak to you. If you're not, he might still speak to you and tell you to repent. But he'll have things that he wants you to do. Places he wants you to go. People he wants you to see. People that he wants you to love on. Maybe get thrown up on. I've had a few of those. God cares about people. And he wants to place in our heart a heart of flesh that we would care about people. When God tells us to do something, we'd say, Lord, I, I don't know why you're telling me this, but I'm going to go do it. I'm going to obey. I'm not going to put this off. Uh, Lord, I, I think I have important plans, but if you've spoken to me about this, this is exactly what I'm going to do. Well, what if we just had this few people here and next week, most of us, did exactly what God told us to do. I think we'd have a revival. I think we'd have some people saying, God glories me, saved me this last week. In case you're wondering, it's not because you're such a good evangelist. Or you wear a real nice tie. Or, or you know just how to give an invitation or just how to pray and your prayer is so good that they immediately decide to get saved. None of that's going to happen. Because you don't have anything to do with that and neither do I. The Holy Spirit of God is the one that draws. The Holy Spirit of God is the one that changes our hearts. We can't change our hearts. Most of the people that I know, not in the church, think they're going to get better and better. Well, I'm not quite ready to become a Christian yet. I want to, I want to sow some more oats. I want to drink some more beer. I, 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 I want to change wives three or four times before I decide to do that. When God speaks to you and we obey, good things will happen 100% of the time. Just from you listening to this scripture, we can find out what happens when we don't obey. And I think Saul was an extreme example. But God took his spirit from him because his whole attitude was, I'll do whatever I want to do when I want to do it. Now I've got more important things to do right now. He was being buddy bitty buddy with Agag, king of the Malachites. God said, do not do that. Matter of fact, he told him, go and kill every man, every woman, every child, all the livestock. Don't take any of their jewels or their gold or anything. And of course, he just did all the things that God told him not to do. And we're not in a mode right now, I don't think, of going around and killing people. I would not suggest that you go around killing people, even if you think God told you to kill somebody. This is a different day and a different time. But he does want you to obey him. He'd given Saul great privileges, great honor. He had chosen him. God had chosen him himself. Had Samuel the prophet go and select him and anoint him as king over Israel. And he disobeyed him. 
Um, I don't think he had a very good end. Matter of fact, I know he didn't in this world. He and three of his sons all died together. The whole Israelite army was put to rout. They fled before their enemies. They came down and they stole everything they could out of Israel, impoverished them. God said, I have a purpose in this. Go and do it. And he didn't. So everybody paid. Israel paid. I'm not saying they were perfect. They weren't. God calls them a stiff-necked people over and over and over and over, doesn't he? Nevertheless, there were God's chosen people. Still are. Uh, I would not want to disobey what God told me to do in relation to some Jewish people. Most of the ones I've known have been kind of obnoxious, to tell you the truth. Nevertheless, that doesn't make any difference. What makes a difference is whether or not you're willing to hear from God and you're willing to obey. And even if you're not willing to obey, you obey anyway. God wants for them to be blessed. He wants for you to be blessed. What if I witness somebody and they don't get saved? You've done what God told you to do. God will use that as, as uh, some watering to water the, the seed because the seed is 100% good. When we share the scripture, when we share a verse, when we just go to somebody and say, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody can come to the Father except through him. He's not joking. If we can just go and share that with someone, oh, they won't listen. You don't know what they'll do. We don't, do we? They may say suddenly, I've been feeling kind of bad lately. Maybe, maybe I better listen and do something. God's got plenty for you to do. He's got plenty for me to do. And he wants us to do it. He wants us to be obedient. In fact, I think he probably wants us to be a little enthusiastic. In the things that he's told us to do. That his kingdom might flourish. He's building a kingdom. Far different than what we probably imagine. God is building a kingdom. If you're born again, you're going to be a part of that from now on. God wants you to take seriously the things that He has told you to do. I don't care if it's reading a magazine article that has some scripture in it. That could be God speaking to you. Oh, no. I can't get away from him anywhere. That's right. You can't. And, and just think for a minute. God's entrusted you with carrying his precious word. You don't have to add anything to it. You don't have to take anything away from it. All you have to do is obey him. And that word in the Holy Spirit will work. What if you're going to work? Uh, a number of years ago, a number of years ago, uh, when we were praying out here on the porch all the time, we had people coming along the porch to get their groceries. And I was kind of being careful who I call brother or sister. Because uh, I was looking on the outward. Some of them look pretty rough. Some of them talk pretty rough. Some of them spit on the porch their tobacco and other things. And God spoke to me and says, 
you call everybody. You call everybody brother. You call everybody sister. And I wanted to argue with the Lord, but I knew better. So I stopped. <laughs> I'm not sure of all the things that go on there. But I know this. I don't meet somebody and pray with them or talk to them more than just a second or two that I don't call my brother or sister. I'd admonish you to do the same thing. You don't know where they are. You don't know where they've been. You don't know what God's done in their life. Just because they got some tattoos on them, that doesn't mean a thing. It means they were foolish one night. Call people that you meet, brother or sister. Now, the Lord didn't speak that to you. I did. Because he spoke it to me. I'm just saying it's a good thing. It's to, to bring them into the realm. When we got married, my wife and I, and she, she asked me, she says, are you a Christian? I said, oh yeah, I'm a good Baptist. I've been a good Baptist for quite a while. You know what I was doing? I was lying, not about being a Baptist. I was a good Baptist. But I wasn't a Christian. I'd never been born again. I didn't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I just tried to keep from spitting on the floor and doing things that would really upset people. And it was some time after we got married that I got saved. So if she had looked at me at that point and said, uh-oh, this has got to be bad news here. We wouldn't have been married for 56 years. God's got a plan. Don't try to get in the way of it. Don't try to add to it. Don't try to take away from it. Do what God tells you to do. And you know what? He's not going to tell me what he wants you to do. He's going to tell you what he wants you to do. And if you're scared, he's going to say, be of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be fearful. The Lord is well able to handle anything that comes along. That's what he wants you to do. That's what he wants me to do.